I think when we were talking about earlier, you called it screen recognition. It's the new glasses from Ira, the halo. <laughs> they just float right on top of your mm-hmm. head. 360 <laughs> view, rear view mirrors, everything. Blind spot detection? Yeah. <laughs> you know that's funny, come on. It is, blind spot <laughs> detection. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Actually, Facebook just made it a little bit easier to do alt text. Finally. Welcome to Tech Abilities. I'm Jeff Thompson, and with me in the studio is Serena Gilbert. Serena, how are you doing? I am doing fantastic, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing good, 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 good. It's summertime still, but the humidity has broken around here, so it's pretty nice out. How's Colorado? We're on fire, literally. We have four fires in our state right now, so it's very hot. Whoa. Yeah, I'm nowhere near any of the fires, but it still smells like smoke over here. It's kind of interesting. Really? That's just not the winds coming from San Francisco? It could be that and the Colorado ones. Who knows? They're, because they're all on the western slope and I'm southeast. Yeah, I had to think about that. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but So they're pretty far away, but they're, they're very sizable from what I understand. So, Oh, hopefully no damage comes to family, friends, and the people that are in danger. I saw thousands of people being evacuated out in California, so it's not a good thing. What'd they call it? The fire NATO or tornado fire? I don't know. It's a whole new word that we've never even heard before. Fire cane. <laughs> it wasn't that. I could tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Rain, sleet, or snow, they never wrote fire into the postal creed now, did they? <laughs> but hopefully the fires don't slow down your post office out there. I heard that you had a dilemma with the post office. Oh my goodness, Jeff. So the only reason we're talking about this is because we know that a lot of us depend on you know, packages coming directly to our home because we, even if we order something from a place in our same city, it's just not practical for us to go pick up something that we've ordered. And I do a lot of local shopping and then just ask for it to be shipped to me because it's just way easier than trying to ask someone to go pick it up for me. Mm-hmm. Ever since, I, I, and I get it, that the pandemic has definitely caused some, some shipping delays. Like the shipping delays are one thing, but shipping something that started where I live, which is in Colorado Springs, then it goes to West Fargo, <laughs> then Fargo, Then somewhere in Iowa, now it's in Denver, you know, 10 days after it left Colorado Springs. Oh, really? Just to come back (laughs) down to Colorado Springs. That doesn't make any sense to me. My house is literally like nine miles away from where it was shipped from. So it was only five stops away. Yeah. If you count states as stops, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, I guess if you're wondering where your stuff is, uh, I use an app called Informed Delivery. It's by the United States Postal Service. And even if the person that sent it to you didn't necessarily like say, hey, here's your tracking number, you can see everything that's coming to your house. I don't ever look at the uh, mail items because they're like scanned images. So I just don't care about those. I, I use it to look at my packages and it'll tell you exactly when stuff is delivered and where it was delivered. And if it's, you know, in New Jersey when it was supposed to be in California. <laughs> informed delivery and it's totally free and that's for ios you can do it on the website and i know it's on ios i would imagine it's on android as well because it's an app by the usps and it's accessible it's totally accessible oh cool well speaking of mail if you want to contact us or have any suggestions you can send us an email at info at blindabilities.com how's that Are you going to read them out loud when we get them? Because they're all going to be complimentary to me. We already know that. I'll read them with pleasure, I tell you. (laughs) And you can give us a call at 612-367-6093. Just give us some feedback and let us know if we can use your voice on the podcast. And I'm sure a lot of people out there want to hear from you too. So, Jeff, I heard you have a stitch fix coming, but not via the postal service. (laughs) I'm kind of excited. And you know what? You can go into your Stitch Fix app since they say it's on its way, and you can actually scroll through the items as they're being shipped to you so you get an idea of what's coming. Oh, yeah. I'm a peeker. I I always cheat and see what's on the way. Yeah, it's kind of like the presents are wrapped, but if you open the app, you can see what's in your presents. (laughs) But then the, the way that it describes it in the app, though, is just vague enough where you're like, I don't know what that really actually is, at least for the women's clothing. Maybe for you, it's just V-neck t-shirt, polo, (laughs) hoodie. But for women, it's there's so many different descriptors where you're like, the descriptors don't give it justice once you actually see the items. It's like, I would have never ordered that based on the description, but this is really adorable. I love it. I'm surprised you don't 
realize that I'm a Henley man. No, oh, I'm um, sorry. Never saw you, Jeff, so. There you go. <laughs> well, Serena, this kind of goes back to something we were talking about the other day. I'm running the iOS 14 beta 6 right now, and there's a feature that they have under settings in voiceover, and you go down to voiceover recognition, and in there they have item description, image recognition, and the such, and I hope that I hoped that this would work. So when I opened up the Stitch Fix app, that it would work. But all I get is dunk, dunk, dunk. So it's just a beta and they're working on it. And the neat thing is you can turn some of this on just per app. So if you want it to work on certain apps and not all apps. So it's it's coming. It's coming. It's a beta. But, you know, soon I'll be able to go in the Stitch Fix and see what's just right for me. You're going to go into your shop, your looks. I'll get my <laughs> Stitch Fix on. Jeff, your, your, head, your head must be a very dangerous place. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I think when we were talking about earlier, you called it screen recognition. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of convoluted because in the beta iOS 14 beta 6, when you go into your settings and then to voiceover, open that up, then you can go down to voiceover recognition. Open that up and below that, there's going to be three tabs that you can click on. The first one you'll come to is image description. And if you turn this on, it's supposed to speak the description of the images in apps and on the web. So that's kind of neat if it works. And you can also toggle this on and off per app. So if it doesn't work in one app, you know, but it might work in another app, you can turn that one off, turn the others off. And in Get My Stitch Fix On, I couldn't use it because it just, like I said, goes dunk, dunk, dunk. So it's off. The second one you come to is screen recognition. And this is to allow the iPhone to actually make apps more accessible by recognizing items on the screen. Or let's say a developer didn't label an element or a button or something like that. It might say, as we recognize it today, it say may say blah 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 well that way if a developer does test it he'll say no it doesn't it's not may be this it is this so they will correct that and actually put it in there that the button says back or something like that and the third feature is text recognition and this one will actually take an image and find the words that are in it so if you have an image of someone wearing a t-shirt that says, I am the greatest, it will say image with the words, I am the greatest. This is the only feature out of these three that I do have turned on because, you know, it's a beta. I use this as an everyday phone, so I want everything to work. So I'm not experimenting, but I do turn them on once in a while just to check it out. Ah, speaking about check it out, Serena and I just had the privilege of interviewing the CEO of Ira. Troy Atelio and Operations Manager Ryan Bresnahan from Ira. And this is where they talked about the five minute change that they just made and they introduced the gift cards. But, you know, digging deep into the decision making process and everything, it really says a lot about them sitting down with us at Blind Abilities in the studio to take a deep dive into the process that they use to make decisions. And the community is a big part of the decision making process. I'm glad they made the decision. I like sustainability. I totally agree. I do have a plan that I am lucky enough that my work provides it to me as an accommodation. The ironic thing about it is, is that I've used IREF actually a lot in the last week because we're having people sign things and email them to us. And I, I oftentimes need to verify that it is in fact signed. None of those things take very long for me, though. It's really funny. I don't think I've used, it's rare that I use any of my minutes because everything is just so short, but it's also not in excess at the same time. Like I'm not calling 20 times a day and using two or three minutes at a time here. It's maybe two or three times a week of five minutes. Mm -hmm. And I do think that there were some individuals that were maybe using it a lot more. And I think that when Troy sent that email out, there were some statistics in there. And I feel like, don't quote me, but I feel like they said something like between 50 and 60% of the calls that were being made on the platform were only the free calls. And it was just bogging down their whole system. And they probably weren't turning a lot of profit with that, you know, and if we want the service to stay around... It's got to be a profitable business. We can't subsidize it through the government funding and things like that. That's just not sustainable. I really like that they're looking at it from this angle. How do we sustain this type of business this far out? I mean, it was a year ago, 2019, when they enacted the five-minute plan and they tested it out. They've got some stats on it now. Now to make it viable, they have to limit it down to a certain amount. And from this point forward, it should be working. I'm glad they're tweaking it rather than just having it collapse. So I'm excited about that. The other thing is 
gift cards. And this is a great idea. I think, you know, like family, friends and stuff. What a perfect gift for someone that uses a service. And I think it's something that we should even give away a gift card once in a while. Hint, hint, you never know. <laughs> hey. You never know. I'll, I'll try it out. Yeah. I'll send one to you and see how you like it. <laughs> Keep listening. You might, you know, maybe we'll have a contest or something. No promises, but Jeff did not tell me about that ahead of time. So I will pretend that I knew about it. <laughs> Off the tip of my tongue, right this there. This is where all the great boom. ideas come from, guys. Right there. Yep, there it is. There it is. <laughs> but I, I like the gift card thing too, because I think it's minutes that would never expire. So many applications for it. It even makes it easier for Voc Rehab to potentially look at supporting it. I don't know. It does open up some doors down the road for sure. And it brings them, honestly, it modernizes them because I, I don't know any companies where you can't buy a gift card other than Ira. You know what I mean? You can't say that anymore. I know. I, it's really cool. I, and they're really bringing themselves in line with other companies that aren't just, you know, for blind people. They just did the British invasion. Now they're over in the UK and they're using it. So they're doing some more training there. They probably took the same model here that they're doing so well with now over there and hopefully it works good for them because if they can expand well, that's that's huge getting it over into europe there i mean england i don't know if we do we call it england europe no i always call it great britain <laughs> but yeah. i am a really bad geography person like the worst so don't count on me <laughs> across the pond that's perfect now they're yeah. across the pond they're down in new zealand they're down in australia they're here they're in canada I think it's great. Well, and I'm kind of looking, you know me, Jeff. I'm always like that 10 steps ahead person. I'm just, th let's fast forward two years from now. We've got IRA gift cards. We have more accessible plans. We have more access spots and things like that because Target's huge right now. And then Walmart's, I mean, that's huge. Imagine if we can get them integrated into a different wearable. You know, there's a lot of, I don't know who they're in talks with, but imagine when we get a, a truly wireless wearable to pair with that to you. Imagine what that would look like. The Ira drone. <laughs> Not that wireless, Jeff. What do you think? <laughs> Could you imagine at a convention? All the drones <laughs> going around. Oh my God. They just keep crashing into each other. <laughs> oh no, no. The I mean, drones would. Each Ira agent would be able to fly it themselves. Now that's a whole new thing. If they can have a bird's eye view of things. And now. Follow the people who brought you the Ira app. Now we present the Ira drone for all your recognizing needs with the option to turn into a transformer. Get yours today. Wow, think of the accuracy of navigation then. Mm. Holy cow. You might have come up with the next great idea, Jeff. You might want to make sure you like trademark Stick that. Stick around. Something. This is a long show, folks. <laughs> a lot of these things are just rolling off my tongue. I tell you. It's all you. gold. Yeah. All gold. Yeah. It's recorded. We got. You know what that reminds me of? Do you remember? Oh my gosh. We are both going to date ourselves, but that's okay. Do you remember like commercials where they'd be like the CDs, like the compilation CDs, where it'd be like, get this CD that's got these 120 greatest hits from the 70s, and they'd roll the. Oh, yeah. Like all the t song titles across the screen and play the songs. Mm -hmm. That's what your ideas are. They, they just keep going. The hits keep coming. Yeah, those those infomercials where they sit there and say, and you two will love these shows. <laughs> those were the days, my friend. We thought they'd never end. Oh, goodness. Taking a selfie. It seems so simple, right? You just aim the camera back at you and all that. But someone brought this to my attention, how to take a selfie. And I, I had to stop for a second. I said, well, you hold your arm out, you face the camera and you hit the volume button, you know, take a selfie of you. How do you know if it flashes? And here they had their mute button on, you know, the little button up in the upper left-hand corner on the side. The toggle. <laughs> yeah, they weren't getting that shutter sound, that ch -ch -ch, you know, sound. I was looking deeper into that. The other thing is some people who are low vision, you know, use voiceover sparingly and when they're doing the camera, they just want to hit the button so they shut off voiceover. Well, when they shut off voiceover, they don't get that how many faces or centered left up and down. You know, it's just a little tip right there. And I hate taking selfies. I am not good at it. I always feel like I, I don't like having my picture taken generally, let alone selfies, because if you do it wrong, then you've got too much forehead or you're, I don't know. I'm not good with selfies. I'm sure, Jeff, you take tons, though. <laughs> I don't really pay too much attention to selfies, but... Oh, wait, like, wait, one more. 
Oh, goodness. You're like, not anymore, because now I'm going to think that I have too much forehead in my selfies. Yeah, just shining with the light <laughs> reflection and everything, just... <laughs> Is that a halo? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the new glasses from Ira, the halo. <laughs> they just float right on top of your mm-hmm. head. 360 <laughs> view, rear view mirrors, everything. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Blind spot detection? Yeah. <laughs> you know that's funny. Come on. It is. Blind spot <laughs> detection. I like that. I like that. Because have you ever been walking along and all of a sudden you go, oh, wait, I'm going the wrong way. And you just whip around the other way, take your cane and swing around and all of a sudden, oops, sorry. <laughs> that does not happen to me as much. But what happens to me is I have just enough usable vision to get myself in trouble where I'll see a shadow and think it's a step or a person. And then I probably look like I'm doing the robot. 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 robot, 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 robot. Oh, yeah. You do that horse paw. You kind of like step. Kind of like... Like you missed a step. Yeah. Or, yeah, I hate that. Oh, man, I do that once in a while. The other thing that really bothers me, and I know this has happened to you, you're just walking along in a public building, do 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 and then someone starts talking to you, like they say, hello, hey, and you're like, oh, hey, hi, how's it going? And then they just keep talking on their Bluetooth device. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so awkward. Yeah. You feel real <laughs> lonely right after, like, they didn't want to talk to me. And you're like, did they even notice that I talked to them, or... You know, who who saw that? <laughs> hey, speaking of about things when you're walking around and you notice something, I noticed something on my walk today and I stopped and I said, well, that didn't feel like a turtle. That didn't feel like a branch. That didn't feel like, you know, garbage or a anything. A turtle? I, I don't know. It, it just didn't feel like something, but it felt like something. So I backed up two steps, went down. It was a wallet. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I got home. The blind guy found a wallet. Huh. <laughs> Well, I got home and my son read the address off like that. We drove over to the address, went to the door, and this lady answered the door and said, can I help you? And I said, is there a wah, 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 wah here? (laughs) And they were hesitant, you know, like... They're like, who is asking? (laughs) I said, I found something. I'm trying to return it. I'm just verifying that this is the right. And so we collaborated a little bit there. And sure enough, she said, do you want a reward? I said, no, I just, I'm so glad that she's getting back her wallet and uh, it's a good day, you know? So one of those things like a blind guy finds wallet. Yeah. What are the chances of that? Like, honestly, for your cane to just happen to like hit it exactly. Cause you can easily just miss, you know what I no, mean? No, I like, stepped on it. It wasn't a turtle, remember? Yeah, well, I think it's weird that you would have thought it may have been a turtle, but okay. You know, how many turtles do you encounter in your walks? (laughs) I did take two, three steps past it, and I thought, what was that? You know, it was just something out of the ordinary, and it was just one of those things. But I I felt good Mm -hmm. that it got returned. That's awesome. Because, yeah, I'm not judging anybody else that may have found it there. Someone told me one time you're supposed to actually, if you find something, leave it there because the person will be back to look for it. And I'm thinking, "Uh." not in a public place like that. That. Yeah. I think I disagree. Oh, shoot. It's Marlon. BA Studio 4. Hey, Jeff. This is Marlon. I was walking in front of your house one day, and I think I lost my wallet. In it, there was my identification card, my library card, and about $4 billion. Can you please send it back to me? Thank you. Marlon. BA Studio 4. Oh, yeah, Jeff. Uh, in my wallet, there was also a turtle. Yes. Another thing I found was a beta. It showed up on my phone. I did it. Just randomly, you know, because you, you do have to do a little something for the betas to show up. I belong to a, a beta group, and they're, they're a great bunch of people. They test it, and they are out there working for us. They sacrifice their phones, their time. They send in the reports, the feedback. They're the ones that get things fixed. So when we do get the rollout of the iOS 14 when it comes out, they did a lot of work. And I tell you, they're busy. And so I decided to do it. I downloaded Beta 4 and it was glitchy for a little bit. And then Beta 5 came out. I decided I'm going to wait for Beta 5 and it was worse. So what I did, I wiped out my whole phone, put it all back on. It's working pretty slick right now. And I, I do like the back tap. I set that up where you tap on the back of your phone and boom, I got my control center showing up or I do a triple tap and I got news popping up. So it's pretty cool. Some of those little things. We talked about the screen recognition. There's a few other things, especially one of my favorite is the app layout, the library of your icons, the apps that you have on your phone. Usually you have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, whatever pages you have. Well, this layout puts them in groups of four. You got two across the top and then as many apps as you have, it'll go down as many categories, I should say, because there could be 64 in one category, like productivity, entertainment, lifestyle, and they're arranged in like a 
four on a die. So the fourth square, the bottom right hand square of each category, if you tap on that, it'll open that category and then it'll be alphabetically listed. So like Facebook would be at the top of the page and WhatsApp would be at the bottom alphabetically. It's something at first I didn't really like, but I'm starting to like it more. So a lot of neat stuff coming out in iOS 14. Yeah, the way you described it, it reminded me, at least the way you're describing it, of again, we're going to date ourselves. <laughs> when Windows first came out, when it was like, what, Windows 3.0 or something before they started saying 95, 98 and all that, where you literally like a lot of people might not realize this, but Windows was named because it literally had different parts of the screen that were windows that had icons in it. So the way you describe the new layout of the home screen almost sounds like that to me. I, and I could be wrong because obviously I'm not seeing it, but I, I wonder if that's what it visually looks like. Well, for example, for people who use Braille, the letter G, one, two, four, five in the Braille cell, that's how it's laid out. So number five would be the category name. And if you tap on that, it opens up. And just to date us a little bit more, if you remember the push buttons on a phone was one, two, four, five would be the same layout, a little twisted from the Braille cell, but one, two, four, five, the five still ends up in the same spot. Interesting. Anyways, it was foreign to me at first, but the more I use it, the better I like it. And for the alphabetizing since it's in a category of itself, it's okay. It's manageable since they're all from the same category. I don't want my entire apps to be alphabetized because I'd never find anything. Have you noticed any major like voiceover improvements or anything? Or I know you talked about back tap and things like that. Anything else that you've noticed that seems different? Well, one of the things that I think you'd like is you can take a picture and you can add a caption to it now in the details. Finally. Thing is, so if you share it to Facebook or if you post it somewhere, the caption does not follow. So maybe that's something they'll work out in the future. I'm sending that in the feedback. So maybe they'll take note and do something about that. Yeah, but if you're scrolling through your camera roll to post it to Facebook, you can actually confidently pick the correct picture because that's always my biggest fear is I'm going to click the wrong picture. <laughs> the positive side of that, it did follow my email. When I emailed the picture to me, I opened it up and the caption was there. So it works some places, but not others. So we'll see how it goes. But even in my pictures now, Apple is starting to recognize the pictures as well. They pick out my face, you know, picture of Jeff near a trailer. Oh, it, it knows you're Jeff? Yeah. Really? It's not calling you like Brad Pitt. Well, it's just a beta. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the other thing is in screen recognition, if they're going to fill in all these images that you know aren't labeled and all that stuff, if you think about this, when you do object recognition on some of these apps that we have, it says table with a lamp or something of that nature. But are they going to go into such a detail that is going to give you, you know, there's a table with clutter on it. Jeff, would you like me to add clean table to your calendar? Or, you know, the sink looks a little full, Jeff. Would you like me to add wash dishes to your calendar? So it's like, what level are they going to stop at? What level can we set the degree of how much information we want? Or is it too much information or is it not? I shut it off because I was scrolling through like Facebook. They have icons here and there and they have everything. And it was like saying every little thing, you know, it's like someone talking and all of a sudden they have to say a sound for a comma, for a period, for a question mark, for an exclamation mark. It would just get annoying after a while. Well, so I wonder what level they're going to set the algorithm for to make this, you know, comfortable to use and not, you know, cluttered. I'm excited to try that, though, because I have thought, especially for the image recognition that Apple has built in. I feel like the Facebook one's getting better because I especially just like I use it more for the, the text based images. But it would be nice like if it was like a picture of my son and it was, you know, like the back to school picture I posted. I did add the alt text to it. But wouldn't that be cool if because I just couldn't the, his sign had like six things on it that said, you know, what grade he was in, the date, his favorite color, all those good things. I was not about to type all that. Sorry, guys. But wouldn't it be nice if the image recognition was so sophisticated that it said like six and three quarters year old young boy standing holding a sign that reads these things like that would that would be really nice so it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out yeah there's an option to read text in a picture if it's there so you can turn that on from apple's side of the view there are a lot more settings that you can adjust there's also one in there about the covid19 tracking and you can turn that on 
that's in the beta. It's, there's also something in the 13, but it, nothing's really turned on. It, it starts getting into that, wow, are they tracking you? Oh, and you can turn off tracking from other apps to apps. It comes default to off. So there are some changes that I really like. One of the things I did notice that in the podcast app, it's switched around a little bit. Now they actually have more suggestions since you like this podcast, you might want to check out these other ones. They're readily available there too. And something we were talking about before, the reason I didn't ever like the podcast app was because it would download everything. And it was just so hard to go into everything. But if you go into settings, uh, your master settings icon, just go into there and then go all the way down to podcast, open that up. You can set global settings. You can turn off download, like set it to never or none. And you can decide because it'll show that there's a new podcast. You can decide to download it when you want. And that's how I like it. So check that out. If you haven't liked the podcast app for certain reasons, you can go into there and make some changes to it now. So it's getting better. And that helped me a ton. I was very glad when you told me that because I did go and check it out. So it's not an iOS 14 thing. Maybe it's been there this whole time and I didn't know it because it's just not intuitive to have to go into your settings app to change your podcast settings <laughs> since podcast is its own app. But that's just me. So I fixed that on mine. And But I don't know if this happens to you, Jeff, where for a while you'll get the notifications that a new podcast comes out. But if you go a few days where you're like, I don't feel like listening to podcasts, then your notifications just randomly will stop. And then after a while, you're like, hey, I haven't heard any notifications from any of my podcasts for a while and then you go in there and then for the next few days that they'll come out again and then it's this endless vicious cycle <laughs> mm -hmm. what i like about the podcast app the native podcast app that everyone has because they have an apple device is if i go to the library tab on the bottom that it'll populate the latest stuff that comes out if you go down you can just swipe through and the latest stuff comes out and now with the new setup it just populates and it even says updating podcasts and you can just swipe through and see what popped in i do admit that the notifications have never been prompt as much as other apps have done but i'm going to just look around and see what the settings will allow me to do more. Maybe there's something else that I have to do. But that made me start looking at other apps. So while I was in there, I started going through some other apps and seeing what kind of settings that they have individualized that you would think should be in the app. But actually, I wonder if Apple controls that or if that's where global settings are. I know some apps do have global settings in them. So you're right, it, it is peculiar. Well, and I wanted to address one thing you said too, that you noticed like the COVID-19 tracking things. And I don't know, I only had one friend on my Facebook feed share this and I was like, this doesn't make any sense, but that's okay. I don't know if you've seen it in your feed or if any of our listeners have, but there's a, a meme going around saying that, you know, Apple and Android are tracking you through this COVID-19 thing. And Jeff mentioned it already, like it's, it's, that's not true you have to actively go turn that on. And I don't even know what it does if you were to turn it on, honestly. I, I don't know what it would do, but it, it please don't fall for things that just because it's on the internet, because it is not accurate that you're being tracked by your cell phone for COVID-19. To actually have it really work like the fear mongers are talking about, you have to actually have to download an app for your health area and it goes into the privacy that turns us. So it's kind of convoluted to really get it to the point where you're actually tracking yourself in the presence of other people who may have tested positive, all that type of thing. It's an idea. It's interesting. But you know what it really makes me wonder is when they went to Google and Apple and asked, could we track people individually when they intersect each other? They probably said, oh yeah, we can do that. <laughs> like, no problem. We been doing it forever. You come to the right people. But Apple won't. That's the nice thing. Like they are like Fort Knox with data and stuff like that. Like, yeah, we could, mm -hmm. but we won't. You know, <laughs> we're not TikTok. <laughs> Like I said, there's a tracking section in the settings where you can, by default, it comes off that apps can track you from app to app. Like if you're using Facebook, it'll know what you're doing here. It'll do this, you know, they all work together to get that information and all that stuff. So I think Apple's leading the charge on privacy. Well, and the thing about Facebook, but that people don't realize, and I learned this just because I was, I, I, took some like marketing things and was like, so that's how that's working. It's actually your email address that causes that Facebook tracking thing. So like as an example, we bought a new little table for my son's playroom for him to have a spot to do art and build his Legos on and things like that because he's a little older now. So we of course searched on Amazon. Well, then I'm scrolling through Facebook the next day and it's like looking for kitchen decor. It's like what happens is when a company has your email address, 
they can then use that email address to essentially retarget you with ads because they upload the, that email address into the Facebook marketing system. Mm -hmm. And then Facebook retargets that ad based on your email address. So that's why if you've searched for something on Amazon and then you're scrolling through Amazon, all of a sudden it's like queuing you to, to purchase something. It's all based on if you use the same email address for your Amazon account as you do for your Facebook. It's very tricky. It is. And I like that Apple has the ability for you to go into settings and under privacy to actually shut some of that stuff off. It's fun to go into your settings sometimes. Go into the privacy, check that out and see what they're doing. You can even go all the way down and you can find Apple advertising. Scroll down through there and go down to personalized advertising and you can turn that on or off. And that's one way that you can limit how Apple uses some of your information for other people to advertise. And while you're at it, once you're in privacy, check out the section that says tracking. And here you can deny the ability for apps to track you across other apps and all that stuff. So it's, it gets kind of convoluted a little bit, but it's nice to investigate some of this stuff and go check it out. So go into privacy, read all the little headings. And if you're interested, go in there, dabble around, check it out. But yeah, tracking and Apple advertising is something that I highly recommend to go shut off. Well, it's just like the Bluetooth thing when I think it was 13 or was it 12? When all of a sudden every single app was like, this app needs access to Bluetooth. And we're like, why does this random, like, why does Panera Bread need access to Bluetooth? You know? Mm -hmm. And it turns out it's because places have Bluetooth things in their stores and they're using it to track how people move about their store for marketing and placement purposes. So it's just really interesting. And that's why Apple started saying, do you want them to have access to Bluetooth? Because places are super tricky in how they get their data and, and target you. Exactly. And when you go into tracking, that's when you shut that off. Then they have to ask. And that's what pops up now, except for now they want to do it through your Wi-Fi as well. What? So say you have an iPad mm -hmm. and you have your phone. So you make changes here. So then it'll know that they're connected, that they'll, it'll do that. That's the best way I can explain it without being cynical or, you know, what's really going on, you know? So I yeah, think that's it's, weird. Well, it's very odd. I, I can say, I can see this working like your HomePod knows what your Apple phone is doing. And so I can see that type of connectivity. So you're logged in with your iPhone and your iPad and you're sharing the same iCloud account. Would that be the only thing? Or say you have a party and there's 12 people over standing six feet apart, of course, but there's 12 people throughout your estate. Can they actually go into all those people's? stuff you know it's like wait a second it's just things that make you go huh i love that you said that i have an estate <laughs> speaking of estate who got their house cleaned lately oh i'm i did like i finally bit the bullet and decided to have someone come help me clean the house and i, I don't know if this happened to you jeff but like you get finished cleaning something and you're so proud it took you all freaking morning you know got this wood floor it's polished and then somebody's like Huh, did you clean this? You know, like, it's like the worst feeling. So it, it it was super worth it for me to to have somebody come in and just take care of that for me. And more affordable than people think. Even once a month, if, if you're like, I think my house is clean, but I can't I can't reach these areas, or I just can't tell if I got it as clean as it should be. I think it's a, a worthwhile investment to have a professional come in and take care of some things for you, just even once a month. Well, you know that feeling like when you walk into a fresh hotel room? Mm -hmm. Not that you walked into an unfresh one. I would maybe, hope not. I don't know. No. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> we'll stick with the fresh hotel room. <laughs> but when you walk into there, you walk in with your luggage, you set it down, you set it somewhere, you might unpack it, you might leave it, but the whole room is just like a model room. There's no clutter there saying, oh, I should do that. Oh, there's a pile of mail over here. I got to sort that. Or there's something, I got to clean that. There's none of that. So when you walk into a, a space that is cleaned, it's a relief. And when you're cleaning your own place, you start here and then you go to here. But when someone comes in that's running a business like that, they're going to start on the left and do everything all the way till they get to the right. Probably in a better order than that, but they're cleaning it like they've never been there before, in a sense. Well, and it's just so shocking because, like, if I clean the house and I'm doing it, like, by myself, like, I don't know if this happens to you or Lori, but I'll get most of it done. And then when it's time for the floor, especially, like, tile or wood floor, I'm just beat. 
so my floors would not get clean as often as they should because it's like i just spend all this time scrubbing the bathroom and this stupid shower and i'm just tired and this cleaning crew it was a crew of three people and i remember when i got the estimate i was like so how long do you think it'll take and she was like mm, hour and a half and i was like what are you sure she's like yeah eh, tops they were in and out in about an hour and i'd say 20 minutes or so ish i was shocked did you meet him at the door and say, I still got 10 minutes coming? No, because they, <laughs> Jeff, I cannot tell you how good of a job they did. They even made up my son's bunk bed. And you know, if you have a bunk bed, you know that that is like the devil's creation. I swear, like bunk beds were invented to see how frustrated people could get trying to just make them look nice. They made it up like it looked mm. like a showroom, how they made it up. Like it looked so nice. And then, of course, 10 minutes after bedtime, he's got like the whole comforter completely off the bed. Um, <laughs> like, God, didn't even look nice for that long. But like just the littler things, I mean, I, I, I tried one cleaning service and I was not satisfied. I could, you know, I, you, we're very tactile people, I would say. And for me, something's not clean unless it feels clean, you know? And the, the first person that did it, there was just a lot of stuff that she did not do. But this next crew, like, it was kind of nice, Jeff. It was kind of like, it's just like the hotel for like, where you're like, look at this they even did this like i would not i was like i would not even be shocked if there was a mint on one of my pillows that is how clean everything was oh <laughs> that is the test of a truly cleaned house oh it was so nice so nice and they were very professional they took their shoes off just cleaned everything top to bottom it was so nice that's interesting Lori's talked to me about that because i've cleaned and she says it's not really that clean you know, mm, the feel tactile. here and i'm like yeah oh feel here you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know what you mean and i was getting really anxious about it like i'm in a decluttering phase and there's not much we can control in our lives right now and i'm like i need to be in a clean space and i am so much more relaxed in the house at least for now you know <laughs> it, it, it makes a difference mm -hmm. serena you mentioned this and it's a good thing i recommend everybody to try a cleaning service at least once so you know where or how it should look when you do clean yourself i mean it's not like mom coming over and doing it for you or you know mom says she's gonna be over in 10 minutes you know that type of cleaning <laughs> right <laughs> with all that said i have to say at a training center we teach people how to clean you know the bathroom the kitchen the dishes how to do laundry how to sort and labeling and all sorts of other things there's a whole list of podcasts that we have in the blind ability library on how to do that type of thing uh, life skills soft skills all that type of stuff so this isn't something we're not saying don't learn how to clean if you do feel that it's worth it there are cleaning services out there and like i said once you see how good a clean house feels you might want to keep it that way yourself i like when you said decluttering because that's something i'm doing myself i want that feeling when you walk into a brand new space like a hotel room it's just ready for you and the future and not a reminder of all the things you have to do. <laughs> you know, you mentioned earlier about, you know, posting the Facebook and you put some alt text on it and you didn't go into all that detail. But actually, Facebook just made it a little bit easier to do alt text. You don't have to go through these hurdles as much. Now, when you get the photo, you put the photo up there, you can now click on the more button and they have add alt text right at the bottom. Yeah, I think Jeff, you're you're probably gonna scoot a demo in there, but I, I nobody's talking about this because it's not obvious. Like if you would not have told me, I think it was last week, I would have never known that that button was even there, and let alone that they added the alt text there. Finally, I I don't know why it was never integrated in there in the first place, but definitely check out the demo because it it's hard to explain without actually seeing it because you have to post the photo not post it but kind of upload it to your post and then click the photo or double tap the photo and then you'll find the more button and you'll be able to do it right there well what's really neat is as soon as you click it a little message pops up it's not obtrusive or anything it actually says that adding alt text for people who are visually impaired you know so it's kind of neat that it's right there now for anybody that has wants to do more to the photo that sees that they might say oh Billy down the street's blind. Maybe he'll see this, or, you know, something <laughs> of that nature. Yeah. We're doing a tech abilities demo cast, and I want to show you how Facebook has streamlined, built right into the workflow, adding alt text to your photos that you put up on Facebook. Yeah, it's taken a while. A what? A long, long while. But it's there now. So let's dig in. Let's open up the Facebook app. Facebook. Facebook. Profile picture. Button. We'll swipe left to right. Single finger swiping left to right. Create post button. Mm-hmm. Single finger double tap. Create room button. 
Photo slash video button. Okay, so let's add a photo. Single finger double tap. Alert. Facebook would like to access your photos. This lets you share from your camera roll and enables other features for photos and videos. Now these permissions may be changing on how your phone is set up right now. You may have already done permission. You may not have. Maybe the beta asks certain questions for more privacy of access to your photos. So ignore this a little bit. Yours may be unique to your phone. Select more photos. Ellipsis. Button. Selected. Photo. Tells me the location and, and the time. And you can usually do that because you know what time you took the photo and you can guess and do that. August 19th. Not only does it give me a little bit of information about what the picture looks like, which is nice. Blue sky. Crosswalk. Grass. But one more flick down. Fridley Methodist Church at Crosswalk. Caption. And there's the caption that I added to that photo. Now I'm sure that it's the right photo that I want to put out to the public. So there we go. That's done. Button. Single finger double tap. Post. Button. Single finger swiping left to right. Jeff Thompson. Choose privacy. Public. Button. Add post to album. Button. Say something about this photo. Ellipsis. Text field. Now, of course, you can add text here to tell people what, you know, is on your mind, right? You can type it in or dictate. Can't say how many times I walked, rode, drove past the Fridley Methodist Church. I remember when they dug the cornerstone for this edition. And now here's the neat part. I'm going to swipe single finger left to right until I get to the more button. Photo. Blue sky. Cord. Grass. Edit photo. Button. Make 3D. Button. More. Button. And now we'll single finger double tap. Remove photo. Button. And now here's some options. And we'll just swipe down to the sweet spot. Add alt text. Edit photo. Button. Make 3D. Button. Edit alt text. Button. Single finger double tap. Cancel. Button. Now I'll swipe left to right. Single finger. Change alt text. Heading. Add alternative text that describes the contents of the photo for people with visual impairments. Text field. Text field. Is editing. Insertion point at start. And then we'll add the information that we want to put in the alt text. Image of the Fridley Methodist Church on Mississippi Street. A tall A. Frame style church with a total glass front. When we're done, we're done. Done. Button. Single finger double tap. Cancel. Button. Swipe single finger left to right. Post. Button. And then we post. Single finger double tap. Now trust it's there. But hey, let's verify. Jeff Thompson. Just now. Public. More. Can't say how many times I walked. Road. Drove past the Fridley Methodist Church. I remember when they dug the cornerstone for this edition. Photo. Image of the Fridley Methodist Church on Mississippi Street. A tall A, frame style church with a total glass front. React, two finger double tap to interact with this post. Actions available. With your rotor set the actions, you could just flick up or down and have these options. More, share, comment, react, like, activate. I really like that it just read the text that I added for the post, but then it seamlessly went into the photo and read the alt text. Perfect, boom, there you go. So there you have it. Now family members, friends, anybody can add alt text right in the workflow. What a way to go instead of digging, hunting, and going through a river, a jungle, just to try and get the alt text on there. It's all streamlined right in the workflow. I love it. All right, there you have it. If you have any questions, give us a call at 612-367-6093. Leave us a message. Give us permission to use your voice on the podcast. We'd love to hear your voice. Drop us an email at info at blindabilities.com and we'll get back to you promptly. All right, let's get back to the show. It's really neat that it's out there. It's an option before you post. We used to have to post yeah. the thing, come back to it, add the alt text. Hope nobody it saw up. it. Yes, <laughs> You're, you do it within like 36 seconds and there's mm-hmm. all of a sudden three likes. It's like, What? Grandma. <laughs> and if they if it hit their news feed before it refreshed with the alt text, then you would have people from the community saying, I don't know what this says. And it, it, it was so frustrating. I, I'm so glad that they fixed that. I wish that they would have, you know, they have their Facebook accessibility page. I wish they would have pushed an announcement out saying that they made this improvement because I haven't seen not one person talking about this other than you. And I think you might have discovered it by accident yourself. <laughs> like, who mm-hmm. knows how long it's been like that? It could have been like that for six months and we just never noticed. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. I clicked on more and there it was. And it was like, really? Whoa. It's like Christmas morning. You're like, how long has this been here? And it's funny when you told me that and I was like, I want to test it, but I don't have any pictures to post. <laughs> like, of course, when you find the new feature, you don't have a use for it for a while. You know, I just posted a picture like the day before when you told me about that. Mm -hmm. And that's what will be really nice with iOS 14. At least you'll be able to put the captions in your camera roll. Another thing about podcasts, you're listening to a podcast. Now Amazon and Audible are going to start to release podcasts. Yes, they sent out an email for podgra pod podgrass. <laughs> hmm. What is podgrass? You're is in Colorado. Colorado, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> is it what you take to listen to other podcasts that aren't from the Blind Abilities Network? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's some type of like, uh, you know, bluegrass music. There's podgrass music. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. But for podcast providers, content developers, makers of podcasts, they sent out emails to people that they could get in there beforehand. So when they launch this, there's going to be a good supply. And I got a message and I signed up and it was really easy signature. However, there is one small little thing that was in the agreement that we all had to click accept. And it says... Because apparently Jeff actually reads those things. <laughs> You are the only person in America that reads those. Congratulations. <laughs> One term in particular, it said that you could not disparage Amazon or the products from Amazon. So that was one condition that the podcast couldn't contain information like that. So that made me like, huh. How would they know, though? Like, do you think they're going to send everything through like a speech recognition software? Then it then, you know transcripts it and searches for keywords like how would they really know do you think jeff bezos has anything else to do that's probably what he's going to be doing for the next few weeks well, he sneezes and he makes like a billion dollars so I mean. yeah <laughs> collect his kleenexes used or not gross yeah. that's interesting you know the podcasts are being swallowed up by all sorts of different companies and they're expanding into different areas like uh the guy that does those three hour long podcasts got paid a hundred million dollars to leave and join spotify you know wow oh who was that um his initials might be similar to yours what is his name it's crazy he probably said you can't buy me out it's a hundred million dollars where do i sign Everyone has a number. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. You might. I'll use that I, number. I would take a tenth of that and be okay with it. <laughs> like, my yep. number is much smaller than Rogan's number. I'll tell you that. We were known as Blind Abilities, and now we're known as the Cracker Jack Barrel <laughs> for a hundred mil. Is there a Cracker Jack Barrel? Cracker Barrel. That's it. Cracker Barrel. Oh what, my goodness! What's the name of that? Cracker Jack what's is the... like the popcorn caramel snack thing that had the toy in it. Like there'd always be like, oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, then Cracker Barrel is a restaurant. It's a country store restaurant kind of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh hey, for a hundred million, it's now the Cracker Jack Barrel podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So we know Jeff's number. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing, now that we talked about a restaurant, I was tasting this bar up at the trailer. My cousin made these bars. And my other cousin, the next time I was up there, handed me a card. It was an index card. And she said, Lisa wrote out the recipe for you since you like those. And you don't have to bake them, but there's these bars that'll give you cardiac arrest like in no time. I was like, oh, thank you. I wasn't going to say, yeah, it's on a neon green card and it's printed with a ballpoint pen you know like don't you know i'm blind <laughs> <laughs> the thing is i fired up seeing ai and i turned on cellular connection because usually some people have it just set for wi-fi but i turned on the cellular so it works and i took the picture it read everything to me like i was floored i mean handwriting to me was always this one thing like i did it pretty good you know it nailed it, except for like the one slash four. It read I slash four instead of one slash four. But you can figure that out easy enough. It was it was good enough to copy the text and sh ship it to someone. And they could actually produce that recipe into a baked good, non-baked good. These were not, no bakes. So it was really cool. I think that's awesome. I've used the Seeing AI handwriting app back in the day when I was still in my physical office. And sometimes people would write things, I, you know, 
the sighted world, sometimes they're just like, yeah, this works. They'll, they'll write little notes on a sticky note, put it in my box. And I'm like, great, what does it say? I've used it to read through a sticky note before. And it's not perfect, but it gets you the information that you need so you can take action on whatever was written there. And sometimes, mm-hmm. depending on the person's handwriting, it's it's really good. Like, you can even make out the phone number and everything. And so I, I don't know what they did to, to make that work because that's – hard to do because everyone's writing is so different even how they form the letter a could be different between two people and i i really love that that's even a feature and now you can make us some you i think they were lemon bars right i don't even know what they are sugar i, I, I got it I'll, I'll, I'll get it all figured out and I'll, we'll hand them out during the next show yeah yeah just, just tune in live <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Tune in and we'll have the bars for you. We'll, we'll hand them out. Yeah. Bring your toothbrush. These things are <laughs> oof. These things are oof. Yeah. Is that why you had to go to the dentist today? Oh, man. <laughs> you know, I walked in there so confident, like, hi, hi. You know, I got my mask on. Yep, let's go. Let's go sit down. And then they said, okay, we'll just put this in your mouth to numb. And I said, oh, I forgot about that part. <laughs> Um, it's the dentist, Jeff. <laughs> I know. I had no, I, I was like oblivious to past experiences. Oh my God. And, so you thought you would get your teeth worked on without taking your mask off. Is that what well, you're saying? No, no. What I'm saying is I've gone for the last four or five times just clean. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, I, this was a uh, one that they said, hey, come back. Just got this small spot on your eye tooth. We're just... Touch it up a little bit right there, blah, blah, blah. I forgot about the Novocaine. I forgot about the shots and the numbing, the sounds of the drills. Yes. (laughs) My dentist, like, pre-numbed you, which is kind of cool. They, like, rub this stuff. It kind of tastes like Mm -hmm. candy. With a Q-tip type thing. Yeah, I don't know why it tastes like candy, but... And then your tongue's numb because you licked it, but... (laughs) (laughs) They didn't used to, like, I remember when I was, like, a kid and I used to have to get work done. They didn't used to do that. They would just be like, stay still. Here's the needle. (laughs) Oh, I know. (laughs) So it's kind of nice. They've gotten more humane. I wore my oversized shoes so I can curl my toes (laughs) up real easily. (laughs) And the last time I went, I was like, I'm going to bring my AirPods and I'll just, but then I was like, no. Because you know how, like, when you have headphones in and, like, you're, let's say you're eating, like, chips and it, like, amplifies it in your head? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I don't want to have the drill amplified in my head. So I ended up, they were like, you sure you don't want to put your headphones on? I was like, I'm good. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. You're, like, that's a horrible noise. <laughs> it is. It is. And the dentist and a dental assistant are always just so casual. They're always like, so what are you doing this week? And, and you're like, you're literally like drilling part of my tooth out and you're just chatting about what you had for dinner yesterday. It's yeah. <laughs> and like, you're really going to answer with full sentences. <laughs> I don't know why they do that. It's so annoying. <laughs> yeah. And okay, nothing against this dentist that I go to. I love them. They're, they're great. I've been going for years. The thing is, this was the first time I had this assistant. I don't know, new, I don't know. But they're the one that wanted to pick up every piece of saliva with the thing without oh. having to like close your mouth. They just wanted that. I always feel like I'm going to choke when they do that. I know. I like the ones that say, okay, close, and it just, it's just like gone, you know, <laughs> gone. Just let I, me, just let me drool. I'll be okay. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I hate, I, we were texting earlier and I told you I hate the dentist and you're like, that's an awful strong word. No, I, it's not personal. <laughs> like, it's, mm. it's not, I hate Dr. Brian. It's, I hate the dentist generally. <laughs> I know. It's one of those things though, Ugh. but you have to go through it. And next time when we all get together, we're going to be talking about Zoom, some shortcuts, how to join a meeting, how to host a meeting, some tips and tricks that we have found that work for us. Both of us are on Zoom quite a bit each day of the week through work, through play, and through work and work and work. (laughs) But it seems to be the go-to nowadays, and it's something that's happened this year that Zoom really boomed. Why, Serena, did we not buy stock in june in january i didn't have my crystal ball working though i'm sorry no, jeff no. <laughs> serena mr thompson serena jeff i think we've covered everything we needed to cover i think so and then some of course don't forget that we have our blind abilities community on facebook join the group there's lots of discussions that are going to be happening there i also have an assistive technology group called the assistive technology community for the blind and visually impaired that is not right what is my group called jeff (laughs) 
I think it is right. Assistive technology community for the blind and visual. You have. Impaired. It's it's late. <laughs> that is one of the largest mm-hmm. AT groups for blind and visually impaired. And it is. Extremely active. Hard for me to even keep up with it sometimes. And then what's our Twitter handle? Mr. Thompson. <laughs> You can follow us at Blind Abilities on Twitter. You can download the Blind Abilities app from the App Store and the Google Play Store. That's two words, Blind Abilities. And don't forget about your Alexa skill. Ah, yes. All you have to do is ask and it'll play it. Just ask for Blind Abilities and boom, there you go. You can do that on Google. You can do it on almost anything now and pretty soon on Amazon and Audible Books, Audible Podcasts. What's this world coming to? Audible. Fancy. And be sure to subscribe to Blind Abilities Podcast, your favorite podcaster of choice. That's two words, Blind Abilities. Give us a call at 612-367-6093. Drop us a message. Give us some feedback. We'd love to hear your voice. And from all of us here at Blind Abilities, to you, your family, and friends, stay well, stay informed, and stay strong. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed. And until next time, bye-bye. And then cue our funky music, right? <laughs> when we share what we see through each other's, each other's eyes, eyes, we can then, we can then begin, begin to bridge the, the gap between, between the limited expectations and the reality, and the reality of blind of abilities. Blind. Realities of, of, blind abilities. of blind abilities. For more podcasts with a blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com. On Twitter at Blind Abilities. Download our app from the App Store, Blind Abilities, that's two words. Or send us an email at info at blindabilities.com. Thanks for listening.